problem. Uh, <laughs> I hope I can make some explanation about what makes uh, model airplane design so difficult. It's the uh, same idea uh, for solving lots of uh, multivariable questions. Uh, so for an object, for an object to be somewhere, uh, for example, this object, it must have a uh, some kind of location. So. Uh, for example, in the three D space, uh, you could have e you could have either left hand or right hand coordinates. That doesn't matter. Uh, you could have a location, so that's a position of x, uh, y, z, and uh, you also get something called uh, uh, velocity, uh, which is uh, the displacement, which is the the difference in two uh, places uh, with, respect, uh, with respect to the difference in time and you also get uh, velocity which is just uh, the rate of change of uh, velocity with respect to time and then we, s we, could, we could assume that the space is, the space is um, consistent uh, it, it won't be very technically correct but uh, in most cases is, it works very well so uh, this could be the uh, first derivative of the place function of time and, and also this uh, this could be this could be that so, so that's the that's, sorry about my handwriting that's velocity with respect to time so uh, and uh, you could continue doing that by saying, but that doesn't doesn't really help. So that's the second derivative. So uh, uh, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, which is the second derivative of the the position. Um, but so if you want the, some object to fly fly along some some kind of curve here or maybe it's better to actually uh, actually let's do this uh, for example you get some kind of glider I uh, know this is not a glider but to move it around the place you can assume that's that's the that's the x-axis y-axis the axis and there's some kind of curve you actually get a position for example I got when at the start at the starting point the uh, the plane is here, after one second is here, and after one second is here, you get some kind of a p function, uh, the, the, sorry, the location function with respect, uh, with respect to time, and if you, if you derive that, you get velocity, and you derive that a second time, you get uh, acceleration, so uh, inversely, you could solve, and uh, uh, p is just uh, V of t dt, which and uh, and also you could uh, integrate it in a sec second time. Sorry, let's just try it here. And and also for not it's all it's not only for the translational motion. It's also for rotational motion. If you get us playing here, just uh, draw a very simple plane. You could. Uh, you could rotate it with this axis, or you could rotate, you know, and also what's the what's the other axis? Yeah, there. You could do this. So let's just use. So you could move it that way, this way, or this way, or that way, or this way. So and. Uh, so you get a it was theta and uh, so uh, in relation to uh, acceleration you get a, uh, sorry velocity you get a omega is and uh, acceleration And what's important about that is actually if you learned any physics you get to know there's this uh, famous equation uh, f is 
an A, so you could get A's f divided by n. And for in the 3D space, A is actually a vector. And so is f. Also for the for the uh, uh, rotation motion, you get uh, what's it? T is uh, uh, this is I times alpha, and also you could add alpha is uh, uh, you know x axis, y axis, z axis, so something similar to that. So let's sorry first agree that we could do that together. So don't worry about it. Uh, but these are actually uh, related because uh, when you get to if you want to move the move the sorry if you want to uh, shift the along track, you actually have to change the direction of force, and if you want to change the direction of force, you have to change the uh, the torque that's acting on the plane. So, uh, for the something to balance, it must have, uh, so for something to balance, you can have uh, F net is the sum of F, and if that equals to zero, then, then it's balanced, uh, so it's in equilibrium, and also for the torque, it also applies. Mm, so we could look at the the very uh, the very simple the, the the simplest form if a if the flying is flying horizontally with a constant velocity without any pitching up or pitching down, you could have so you could have this equation because it's in the equilibrium, but uh, when you are uh, analyzing it, the first equation indicates that around a certain point of mass, let's say that's the center of, center of mass, and uh, get a gravity, and also get so this is lift we could call the FL uh, lift and this is air drag and uh, so the same thing you get torque uh, thrust let's just call it FT so from the first equation you get uh, from the first equation you get uh, F FT equals to F drag and uh, and also FL equals to F G. But this is uh, this isn't very simple because you you don't you don't really know how big these these things are. So you know F G is M G, but uh, so I want to generate F L. So how yeah. how does the lift equation works? Is that uh. In last, uh, last century, or before last century, someone defined the equation of uh, of the of lift and drag. It follows that F L is one half of C L rho S V squared, and also F D is. And these things are constant. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not. It's a constant. It doesn't mean doesn't mean it's, it's doesn't doesn't change. It's constant that's uh, defined by F D. So, if this is a if this is a definition function that uh, it always works because it, because it's that that is a definition. We could uh, we could maybe see how it's sometimes related to other things, but. Uh, but the definition of CL and CD are the same thing. Uh, if you look closer to the equation, you will find the density of air. Uh, uh, notably, notably, 
the density of air also changes if the age changes, that is the height, because if you fly higher, the, the, ice, the, the, the air is in lower density. But what's, uh, what's most important here is uh, when, you're uh, when you're designing a small plane, you rarely care about that, but if you, if you want to care about, uh, say, uh, if your plane is going higher than, than, than a usual uh, normal uh, model plane, then you might consider that rho is, uh, is, has some relation to the height. And that will bring more problems. Uh, so let's get back to the CL and CD. So uh, for an airflow, uh, so I will draw a plane here. That's uh, all right. That's my plane. So uh, the the lift are mainly generated by the by the main wing and the, maybe the horizontal wing, but. Uh, you get the F net, so this uh, this F net is uh, is the f uh, is all the forces acting on the plane, and you also get the F L net. So if it's a uh, flying horizontal plane, it's a uh, constant velocity, and uh, this F L net should equal to mg. But you can't guarantee that. But you can't always guarantee that it's it's always equals. I mean, maybe. I mean, um, if if these parts are not generated, uh, are not generating any upward force and downward force, because you always have to, you also have to consider the, the rotational uh, uh, equilibrium around the pivot. But. From the thin airflow theory, so this doesn't. From this part, it doesn't apply for for thin airflow theory. Theory, it suggests that uh, CL is proportional to sorry, is proportional to alpha. So, what is alpha? Alpha is the angle of attack. And uh, if you look at the the thing, you get very confused about these uh, cons these constants, these terms. I mean, the water angle of the attack, angle of climbing, angle of the assembly. These are all different terms. So, uh, angle of the attack, I call it, uh, or some write, write it alpha, but it, but it's not the same alpha here. Uh, or somebody write it as AOA angle of attack. It's the angle between some geometric form with re respect to V. So, if my plane is flying uh, horizontally, even if it's not climbing at any, even if it's not climbing or uh, descending, it still has angle of like that because with respect to respect to velocity, it has some kind of angle. Right, so. So th this this is different from the climbing angle, and even if I'm climbing straightly upward, the angle of attack could be zero because it, uh, respect with respect to velocity, this geometric form doesn't have this uh, this angle. It's if I'm climbing this way, uh, the angle of attack could be zero or even active. Uh, and what are the and and the other thing is the climbing angle. Uh, some people call it theta. It's the it's the it's the uh, angle of the track, the track the plane is flying. So if I'm climb, climbing at fifty five degrees, it means that no 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 matter how this this is gonna be, it's it's just climbing at fifty five degrees. So, and this one is the horizontal line, and this one is the direction of the respective velocity instead of that. Should write as a vector. So, uh.
but there are different ways you can solve it actually. If you look at the whole picture, okay, you can't look at the whole picture, but some of the, at least, at least these three things. Uh, the FT equals FT, FL equals M, FG equals MG. So these two parts are the forces that are generated by the the air. So you could argue that the FT is somehow related to the velocity, but mainly lift, lift and drag. They are. Given by air, and this uh, that's uh, affected by the velocity, ge geometric, and, and other stuff. So, if I further uh, extend that function, you could get uh, FL. Is and uh, is mg and also equals to one half ft equals to ft thrust so but these terms are the same right so these are the reference reference area so you could actually solve these parameters uh, say uh, V has some relationship uh, if, if these parts are known you could solve for uh, uh, the rest of the variables I mean if this part is known this part known and you could solve for CL so how many CL is needed when you have certain velocity, or you could solve how many velocity, how, how much velocity is needed when you have certain CL and certain these things. But you always have to keep this variables and how many variables I forget. I think maybe twenty of them, but we got more variables. In. So and, uh, good way for solving the least. The least speed, so V least when you are doing horizontal flying, is that you you gotta uh, you gotta think about these terms as uh, constant solve for V. So in these multi variable questions, um, even if we say something is a constant, we might have a requirement for that constant, and some some constant is from the experimental data. Or or, or sometimes we don't even know where the question comes from. Uh, so we least we could take square root of C R rule S and uh, M G. But also if you have a look at the F L and M G, you could get F L divided by F G. The is a certain C L divided by C D because all of the rest of the term, but um, it is really hard. Uh, actually, this is at certain alpha or the way. So, so that's uh, if you get a certain kind. Uh, if you get a certain attack angle, you might have certain uh, C over C D, but it doesn't guarantee that they can find that way because. It's just part of the restriction. Uh, so, if you put these parts together, so these three pages uh, are the relationship that's uh, that's solved for the first function. So, so you get the first function from these three pages, but. For it to be flying horizontally uh, with a constant velocity, you all you also have to solve for the equilibrium from the for the torque. Uh, the, in other words, the rotational 
motion. So if you get rotation motion, it's uh, kind of tricky to solve because when you're thinking of levers, actually have some kind of some kind of pivot that's going around the, this one, but on a plane. Say that's the main wing, that's the horizontal tail. You don't have some fixed point on that. And one easy thing is to put the put the pivot on CG center of gravity, which we we could draw we could draw it like this this my this my tail and uh, this part of my main wing and my CG is here. We use this notation. Sorry, I can't see right clearly. Right. So this is the this is the lift that just that's generated by the main wing, and there's some kind of maybe it's positive, maybe it's negative uh, horizontal FL and uh, this part of my CG. And uh, you don't actually know. Uh, sometimes you don't actually know if this part is behind or I mean it's, if is the CG in front of the aerodynamic focus of the main wing or is it uh, it's backwards you don't you don't always know that so it's, uh, it's better to keep it as a, as a subtract uh, as a vector value ve vector quantity that it has positive or negative values and usually we use the st stability margin. That, or, and it's, it's better to write the, the forward uh, stability margin is xmp minus xcg divided by c. What's c? C is the main aerodynamic chord of the main wing. And what's the, what's the main aerodynamic uh, chord of the main wing? It's defined by has uh, half b from zero from zero to wingspan, and there's uh, there's a y of x dx. Actually, c of x of the chord, the coordinates of x. So you you so you just just imagine you get uh, some maybe trapezoid wing. That's just some, so somehow easy to do, and you get airflow. From root core to main core, and you gotta square that thing. Just that's just an intuitive way of uh, remembering the formula, and you get the mean aerodynamic chord. And uh, the impulse and what is uh, XMP? XMP is a value that. Uh, if you position the, if you position the, if you put the CG at the neutral point, uh, the torque doesn't, the torque doesn't vary, uh, due to the, uh, due to the change in in uh, angle of attack. Uh, this might be a little bit difficult to understand, but. Uh, if you think in this way, you get some kind of pivot, mm. and there's my main wing, and this is my tail, and this is L1, and this is this, this is that. This is just name it capsule L. This is my lowercase L, and it's going to follow the main wing. Lift of the main wing times the, the big L plus F tail times small L equals to zero because this part is uh, yeah, uh, uh, sum of torque. Alright, this center of gravity is going to uh, in the center of gravity is going to change the uh, balance in the equation. Uh, the equilibrium. So if you put the CG in, uh, in the middle of the main wing and the tail, uh, then both wings are going to generate uh, lifts upwards. So using you're using the um, uh, lift from both tail and main wing. But if you put the if you put the CG here, and you got a you get a still get a 
lift from the main wing. So for this to be uh, to uh, for the equilibrium, you're gonna use uh, F tail equals to zero because uh, there, there's uh, basically there's um, this statement here. Uh, so the net f so the net torque uh, is equal to zero. Uh, it's ac it's actually not that simple because. Uh, when the air when the air is flowing around a certain object, it's not only gonna not only gonna create a, a force upward and uh, so this this is a lift and drag caused by uh, caused by the uh, air at center at a cer certain angle of the attack. It's also gonna generate it's gonna exert a, a torque. Uh, on a wing, but this torque is uh, usually quite small and uh, negligible. So the definition of SM is uh, the, uh, the sorry the the definition of XMP uh, is called the neutral neutral point. And at this point, at this point, uh, if XCG equals to XMP, basically we get SM equals to zero when uh, so if you put uh, if you put CG at some point, then then the the torque doesn't change with the angle of the attack. So we we should get back to this stage from our uh, thin. Sorry, thin airfoil statement that CL is uh, directly proportional to alpha. So uh, we get here is that with respect to alpha, the CL goes up and uh, so when the, when the CL goes up, uh, not only did the lift of the main wing goes up, but also the F tail goes up, and but F tail is sometimes uh, the the CL of the tail is sometimes smaller than the main wing because uh, we at an assembly angle we could uh, we could make the angle of the attack of the main wing larger than the tail, but uh, but also uh, there's some kind of turbulence from the main wing that caused the tail ha having a smaller efficiency, so it's a uh, it's just a trade off. So if you put CG here, you are using the auto force. But uh, if you put CG here, uh, and some turbulence uh, from out from out of the uh, system uh, that gives the plane at a larger angle attack is gonna be more and more uh, unstable because uh, it's uh, sorry, it's 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 gonna be unstable, and this turbulence. For example, the the alpha get larger. It keep getting larger because uh, the CG is at the back of the neutral point. If if uh, if the CG is in front of the neutral point, it will generate a, a torque that is it is in the opposite direction of the of the interference. So that's what we call it, uh, that the plane have a good stability. So if the stability gets larger, the uh, efficiently actually get some sometimes get lower and you could uh, have better efficiency using uh, say uh, wings with larger uh, aspect, uh, aspect ratio but uh, wings with larger aspect ratio uh, also might cause you to uh, use heavier structure which cause you M to go up which cause you all of these things to go up uh, so this kind of, for this kind of multivariable uh, problems, you actually have to uh, either symbolic solve or just explore or just uh, work from some initial, uh, from initial conditions and work with constraint to move from low fidelity model to higher fidelity model. And I'm not gonna cover up every model that's uh, used. Uh, actually, it's it's impossible, <laughs> and you have to uh, derive something for uh, your uh, specifically for your function. So that's why I created a, this uh, 
model airplane design package uh, in R and but anyway thank you for listening to this part of advertisement but just don't forget this that's only a small part of the problem that this uh, big puzzle start to make connection and uh, start start to get 